GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. So, Fat Man. So, Sleazy. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Call back. Wow. What a callback. It's not like we done tape two weeks worth of shows in one night. We didn't. No. Kayfabe. Kayfabe, bro. <laughs> Let's talk more about that on The Wrestling Show. Welcome, everyone, to another wonderful episode. I did manage to catch him while he was drinking. Tonight, we have, of course, the man that will soon be opening a Waffle House franchise. Chip Willett is with us here tonight. Yay, Chip! Fuck all Yay! Yay! Is it going to be in, in New York? York? It better be in New York. It's got to be in New York. There's a bunch it of them in Pennsylvania. In New York. Oh, it has to be, right? You better go fuck yourself. <laughs> and as always, the undisputed, unified, co-trivia wrestling champion of Canada, Mr. Uh-uh. Ryan Williams of is here Canada, tonight. Not America. <laughs> hey Also, more than I, you can add to the introduction now is... That I ranked the highest out of the wrestling show on our little scorecard predictions over the weekend. So funny you should mention that. I apparently made different fun. predictions because I actually won our pool for once. He Ooh. did. Right? Yep. And of he course, it was the smallest pool we've ever had. <laughs> yep. it was four people. And the reason why he won is because I picked Sasha by submission. Right? <laughs> oh, I love the little nuances with that thing. So that's why I like that scorecard shit. It's deadly. So here here's the fun. Fun, here's the funny part about all this. So there's four people in the pool. Okay. okay. Fat man, myself, my wife, and uh one of Fat Man's friends. Now one of uh, Fat Man's friends doesn't know anything about wrestling at all. Okay. But I tried to make it easy as possible for people. I made a Google form, put it all together, and had it like a little matrix. So you you put the spot where the person and how they were going to win was going to be. Excuse me. Dying over here. Um, the problem was Google doesn't allow you to only do one column. So you could actually put multiple ones in there. So I said in the beginning, if you choose more than one answer – that entire question's out. You, you don't get any points, no matter what. So out of the four people, one person decided to go, boop, 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 boop. So all of her points were gone. So it wasn't even, I didn't even beat four people. I bought, beat three people. And the only reason why, like I, like Fat Man says, I won was because he chose submission and I did. Well, and technically you only beat two people. Thank you. You're one of them. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I beat myself. I, you uh, beat yourself, all right. Oh, yeah. I had 23 people in my pool. Jeez. Jesus Christ. And yours was like $10 a piece, too. Yeah, we did first, second, and third. Uh, out of a possible 31 points, you got you could have got out of my pool, and my winner got 25 of them. Wow. That's a lot. I like the pro wrestling cards uh, setup, though. That was a lot of fun. So much fun. Yeah, I, I found me checking through the pay-per-view, too, to see how stuff was updating and to see how everybody jumped up because they had so many little things that even if you didn't get the winner right, if you knew to pick off the rest of the other stuff, you could still be in contention. Yeah. Well, I, I had a party, so I missed night one in, um, what you want to call it, uh, NXT. So that's why I, I, I didn't, wasn't in that part. But I did get night two in. My okay. last, but Sleazy did all the indie shows, didn't touch none of the WWE cards. Nope. Didn't even s- touch them. My buddy <laughs> that won the Lone Star pool that we had going knew three people on the entire card. Wow. 
and just manage to guess pins and like the other points that way. And because I like the statistic stuff, when you join this website, uh, it joined you into a group that was all everybody that's joined through the website. So it's like 2,500 people in the group. So when you make your predictions, it also registers in their group as well. I was I finished fourth on the Ring of Honor card. Wow. Wow. Um, we'll put the the link to the actual website in our liner notes for tonight. Um, did you want to put our group in there as well? Or or do we want to yeah. do a separate group? Oh, uh, yeah. Hmm. I'll, I'll, we'll figure that out and you'll find it in the liner notes. Now, will that, will that be, uh, every pay per view for that one out? Every- well, I mean, just as an example, the next card that's coming up to pick on is New Japan's Windy City Riot. So when big shows happen and there's a fuck ton of feds now, Indy and not Indy, this, this super carrier scorecard thing is always going to keep going and going and going. Like, mm-hmm. Impact has a special that's going to be there. And, mm-hmm. all right, cool. I'll keep it on. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun to, to, you know, interact, you know, with our multitude of fan, and maybe it'll be something fun to to do for all of us in the future. And I think even like Ryan says, even when it comes to NFL season, they have NFL, right? right. Yeah, but they don't have NHL, NBA, or anything like that. It only has, you know. Not that I've seen. The only NFL thing was they did the Super Bowl so far that I've seen. All right. Oh, okay. We'll see how it goes, and if we can throw some support towards their way, great. All that much better. Uh, let's get into night two. Did anyone watch the pre-show? No. Yo, dog, I heard you like tag team matches. Hallelujah. Triple threat match for the Raw Tag Team Championship. RK Bro defends against the Street Puffets and Alpha Academy. 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Canton gave this three and a half. Ryan, you're the tag team wrestling enthusiast. Uh, Before the match even starts, the little opening things that they do as people are making the entrance, like the little shit they add on just for the TV crowd and shit, always like sometimes enjoy, sometimes I don't. But the new one with Orton and the Riddle Snake. And the Orton Snake kept trying to fucking hit the Riddle Snake, and he just kept dodging with a goofy smile on his face. It was fucking hilarious, because I love the dynamic. It was so dumb, and I loved every second. Oh, see? Like, yeah. it was so Riddle, and you loved it. <laughs> like, right? Um, I honestly thought that RK Bro was going to lose here, and this was the start of the split between Orton and Riddle. It didn't. I'm the only one that actually called the right outcome on this on the on the preview show. You did. Oh yeah. I, uh, I, I'm my on, on my wrestling mania board, the one that we paid actual money for. I picked RK Bro because I'm not dumb. <laughs> 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 That's debatable. I uh, know. I love the solid little opener, and because the face is won, regardless of how I thought it was going to go, faces win and opening this show was deadly. So. I'm I gonna I guess I'll say it. Match of the night right off the bat. Wow. Three one hundred percent agree. <laughs> wow. Three, no. three three quarters. It was a great great choice for an opener. It was a great match. Hindsight being twenty twenty, faces winning makes sense, even though I think the raw kids died. But but it also makes sense for the post Gable show to take the pin for Gable Steven Steveson to come out and punk him. So Gable versus Gable. Okay, so let me let I need to talk about this. Because the only thing I heard after all this happened was, well, Gable Steve Steveson's a piece of shit and blah 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 blah. And it it doesn't really matter. He needs to go fuck off somewhere. Has anybody here here heard of anything bad about him? No. Okay. No. So, Google deep dive searching. So uh, I don't know where that came from. I don't know what's going on with it. It it hasn't been the first piece of allegation that's been thrown out there before this weekend. Most of the time, when I see allegations thrown out, it's and I'm saying most, not all. 
most it's people that are very one brand loyal sided to a fight depending on the fed sometimes yeah. they're real sometimes they're not but usually it's allegations come out like that when it affects one side and it's the other side fans and shit chirping and dreading shit off yeah and that might be the case here so i don't know if anything actually happened or anything like that it, it was a lot of hearsay bullshit too what was there the was, accusation? I don't even know. Oh, that he was a piece of shit and he's a bit of an asshole. What an allegation. So right? I Someone's mean, so Randy Orton's right fucking there. The WWE? <laughs> What's that? So he fits perfectly in the WWE? Uh, well, I was just saying, yeah, Randy Orton's yeah, right fucking there, you know? Exactly. Uh, oh. So well, the, What's that? About Orton. The post-celebration? Oh, yeah. Well, that was the other thing I was going to bring up was that it, somebody had claimed it was a celebration of rape culture. No. Or in showing him the hard cam. Oh, that that was another. I'll, I was going to talk about that later. But the, the, I wanted to get all the outrage out first because I'm just going to no, do nothing but praise the entire fucking match in the post show uh, or post match. It was just fucking ridiculous bullshit. Like, what the fuck? What do you mean you're you're celebrating rape culture by had, basically doing the street profits shit together with Gable? What? What the fuck is this bullshit? And I'm I'm probably the most of the four of us. I'm probably the most liberal here. Um. And I didn't see it that way at all. So I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what fucking yeah, I see that. smoking <laughs> thing happened there that somebody took a hookah of wacky tobacco because that's how they <clears throat> call it because you can't say it otherwise. But it, it was marijuana. Mary Jane. Left, left handed cigarettes. Left handed cigarettes. Yeah. There you go. Um, that we're good. Oh, we're showing our age. The we're icky sticky. The the weedy oh, eaty. Oh. oh, the purple sticky punch. Right, that sticks and stems. Like, is this that your problem? Like, <laughs> yes. So now to get back to the real part of the match, which is the actual match was great, oh, fucking yeah. great. And yeah. you know me, I'm not a huge fan of triple threat matches in in general. They get a little bit better because when they're tag matches because at least there's six people so everyone can pair off. So that makes it a little bit better. Um, but this was great. Fucking yes, please give me more of this shit. Um, and this hey, is all the same. Had you been watching the product for the past couple of months? This is the shit you're getting. Why the I fuck would I want to watch that? He praises it, but why would I want to watch it? Yeah, why would I? If I watched it every week, I'd be bitching that we saw this every week. Yeah, that is true. That so, is very true. So, ha! No, I, because you're not seeing the three tag teams every week. Even the last time they had a triple track tag match for the tag titles, uh, the Street Profits weren't in it. It was Owens and Rollins. Yeah, but RK Bro and Alpha Academy and the Street Profits have all been intertwined and intermingled since about November, December. Yeah, but why would I want to watch that constantly every week? I can watch it why would you monthly. Want, why would you want to watch a build to a pay per view? Yeah, God why the it. fuck would I want to do God this? God damn it! What the fuck is wrong with you people? Watching yeah. weeklies? Fuck that yeah. shit. Oh, hold on. I have a message for you, Sleazy. What's that? I hope you step on a Lego. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. I got to make a phone call. Although, leg warehouse, my friend needs some, something to stand on. <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. And the Gable Stevens, uh, Stevenson. I want to say Gable Stevenson. Even so, though do it's, I. I know, it's, it's, yeah, so do I. Yeah, so do I. They're going to have to do something with that. Um, They'll probably um, name him Gable Stevenson. <laughs> Um, of all the people in WWE to work with Gable, Gable should be it because they, those two guys have the most, uh, the closest pedigree in terms of amateur wrestling. And I can't mm -hmm. wait to see fucking amazing. Let's go Gable. 
Gable sucks. There you go. All right, Chip. I thought it was a great match. Uh, definitely match of the night. Uh, not by far, but it was a match I gave four stars. Uh, it just, okay, bro, I still think it's amazing. Uh, I like this character that Randy Orton plays. It's kind of tolerating Riddle, but he also puts him over at the same time. So, uh, yeah, so four stars. Chip looks like he wants to be painted like one of our French girls. <laughs> <laughs> my my legs are screaming right now. So I'm like, oh. I wonder why. That was yeah. like a week and a half ago. Why are they still hurting? <laughs> I know. I'm still, I'm still feeling the guys. Still feeling. It. Plus, I went to the gym yesterday, so. Black Lesnar versus Omos. Six minutes and 35 seconds. Can't give this one and three quarters. What an overrated piece of shit. Overrated? This is absolutely perfect for a six-minute match that needed to be a six-minute match. Everyone ready? One, two, three. Wrong kid died. Wrong kid died. No. Uh, not, so. not for what happened yeah, that one day. No. No, not for what happened. Again, again, hindsight being 2020. But at the time, the wrong kid died. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> I don't watch the product. Wrong kid died. Cool. For, for the right reason. Anything goes, Matt? We're just blowing her on now? Sure. Sami Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. 14 minutes, 25 seconds. Can gave this two and a half stars. What an underrating piece of shit. This is a great fucking say This match. wasn't fucking match of the night. This, this is VLC 2.0. Right? You, yes! No. That's the reason why yes! it wasn't. The fuck yes! No. Because you brought it up. Yes! It, it didn't deserve to be as classic of a match as that there was. Like, yes! that, that, was, a a jackass. that was WrestleMania sports entertainment at its absolute finest. The only reason, only reason why I can't give it match of the night was the mousetrap thing misfired. It still got him. It still got him, but he had to like manually pull it apart and make it force it over. And the other prop didn't work as oh, well as it you know, like, Oh, that, that mousetrap part. Yeah, yeah, the, the big ending. one. The, the, ending the finish. The match. <laughs> but everything... Mwah, absolutely so, wonderful. Absolutely so wonderful. This is what comedy wrestling should be. I mean... It was entertaining as fuck. It reminded me of a DDT match. It was... Uh, it it couldn't have gone... Really, yeah. And... Mark Henry and Mae Young's son made his WrestleMania debut. Exactly. And that was well, more I, important I than I showed anything. this to my buddy who hates that nonsense. And he just couldn't get over the... F- like the nonsense of the wee man throwing the body slam, which got the biggest fucking pop. I want to point out top three pops of WrestleMania. Number three, Cody Rhodes. Number two, Austin part one. Number one, wee man. Oh my God. That's a lot. And in the meantime, I love the smug pieces of shit that are always shit on why do you bring celebrities into wrestling and don't do anything and blah, 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 blah. Fuck you. Listen to that reaction and just those people there alone, which is close on 80,000 people, let alone everybody else, including myself, that watched at home and thought that whole fucking... It was... Oh. You You know why you brought Johnny Knoxville into this match? It was a 14-minute and 25-second commercial for his movie. That's what it was. But as soon as he knows how much I fucking hate comedy matches... I was laughing during this match. Oh, how could you not? <laughs> this, match, and this match was very entertaining. I gave it three and a half stars. Very entertaining for what it was. Very. I'm going to say this. The best celebrity match of WrestleMania ever. I'll agree with that just because I don't count Pat McAfee as a celebrity anymore. I will agree with that. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't w- consider a WWE not a celebrity. He really isn't a celebrity. Though. He he's he's on their payroll, so you can't you can't call him yeah. a celebrity anymore. Right. When he, when he wrestled Adam Cole, 
He was still yeah. technically, oh. yeah. Yeah. But he he's an no. announcer now. Yeah, not now, no, yeah. Yeah. So in terms of WrestleMania celebrity matches, best one. Best ever. Thank you, Sami Zayn. Really? I, it, if there was ever another one that I'd put up against it, it would be Big Show Floyd Mayweather, but... Right. Because it, it accomplished what it needed to accomplish. Yeah. But I... In terms of quality, in terms of enjoyment, this was way past that. Way past that. My wife was over the roof for this match. She loved every minute of it. How can you not? What What did I you gave, think of it? I gave I, it's, it's fucking phenomenal. I gave it three and three quarters. Um, it's just I I'm a big jackass fan, so all the callbacks, the, the big hand. That always knocks the shit out of people was fucking ingenious. And the Sami Zayn setting up the mousetrap table and then landing the mousetrap table was classic how to sell that spot. Well, season number and then one. I, and, and then I, I just don't think it over how big Wee Man's gotten. Holy crap, when did he get a keg? He got fat. He got S- fat. Sleazy and I were talking. We we're like, why aren't these why aren't these mouse traps set on the table? And then Zane took the bump. We're like, ah, that's why. <laughs> no, no. If, if you thought, watch that, if you watch that back, uh, when he puts his hand and snaps his hand, and ah, uh, as he's hauling the table out, the fucking skirt is uh, mm-hmm. touching on the mousetrap as it's going up. So as he's hauling the table out, they're that's all true. going pop, 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 pop. Not yeah. a single one was set by the time now, it was up. How that big hand. Never got A on camera or B sent anywhere online for someone to be like, this is set up. Also, really cool. Right. Yeah. How? It came out of nowhere and it was fucking great. Okay. So this should, I'm not sure if this is a surprise to anyone. I hate Jackass. I've never liked the show. I've never liked the movies. It's it's not. Oh my been, God. They're fucking great. I, I don't like them. your podcast, I'd tell you to go to fuck, sir. <clears throat> I understand why people like them. It's just that for me, okay? It is what it is. You you like what you like. That all being said, this, I'm not going to say that this is going to make me want to go see the movie, but I appreciate Johnny Knoxville as a stuntman slash professional wrestler, question mark. And now you don't have to go see them because it's on Paramount Network. I don't subscribe to Paramount Network, so fuck that shit. Fatal Four Way match for the Women's Tag Team Championships: Carmella and mm, Queen Sel- Selena defense against Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, Natasha and some stupid MMA fighter versus I'm almost well backwards and mm, Sasha. Mm, Sasha. Mm, Sasha. Mm. Oh, um, uh, uh, ten minutes and fifty seconds. Can't give this two and three quarters. I really thought Team Yes Mommy was going to win. <laughs> okay, so first thing about that. <laughs> first thing about that. Um, Rhea Ripley coming down in her best Peter uh, outfit. Bullet Club Bunny? Yeah, I know, but it was Batman and Robin, dickhead. I, I said that. I'm not saying, and Robin, I'm not, I, said the, I said the same thing. Batman Catwoman. But, but she looked. Those were not bad years. Those were fucking bunny years. They were. 100%. Because I was like, it's Batman and Catwoman. And Sleazy goes, look again. And I'm like, holy shit. Those it's are Peter. fucking funny years. <laughs> it's fucking Peter. It, <laughs> um, I, oh, God damn it. This fucking match. Yeah, wrestling woman's. So he, here's the thing. <sighs> Sasha a tag team. won a WrestleMania match. Unlike some Asian. And so you know I was going to say that because I already warned him. Yep. And a thousand mm-hmm. stars. Ten billion if it was in the Tokyo Dome. Only mm-hmm. because of that. No, two and three quarters. Like I, I agree with John. Like it wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was fine. 
It right was kids fucked died. up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Right, right kids died. Right kids did not die, but whatever. Uh, fuck you. There was no Asian in it. You don't have a say. Right kids died. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so that I'm right kids died. No, you're not but right with that. By the way, I thought, listen, how- I, again, hindsight being 2020, thinking that live, live uh, Team Yes Miley were going to win the tag belts. Uh, if the rumors are true about Ripley joining up with fucking Edge and Damian Priest in that Champa stable, then it makes right. total sense now why they didn't win the tag belts. Right. And they already kind of teased the breakup on Raw, didn't they? Well, yes and no. They, if, they she let she left her in the ring, and then they ran into each other later on. And Rhea said they got a match next week against Naomi and uh, Sasha. So they're and definitely that's when they're going to break up. Yeah, yeah. so they're is. definitely she because she said she said it in the stable. Yes, and actually, was, it already happened, guys. That was Monday. Oh Monday. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, if you appreciate the little finer nuances of things, uh, when Rhea Ripley, they do the backstage segment when she's there by herself, there's that purple light just glowing from behind that Edge has been using. And it's mm-hmm. just there, just in the background, like, because it's WWE, and as much it, the only problem I find AEW has to do that, they do all that cool little shit, but on their YouTube show. So you gotta watch their YouTube show to see most of that cool little shit. WWE is like, nah, we're gonna do it here. On our TV show, benefit of having more TV time, but it's that little stuff, right? So I wouldn't know. I don't watch the product. She's trying. I hate you. What do you think of the match, Sleazy? Women's wrestling enthusiast. Two and a half. Um, it was what? It was two and a half stars. It was, a, it was what? It was two and a half stars. It was what? It was, it was what? what? Okay. What? What? It, it was what? what? Uh, what two and a half <laughs> okay match for house show thank, thank you, you. Yeah. Hey. 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 i remember my first day of podcasting too <laughs> ah. wow chip just just dug it in and twisted oh yeah, yeah he, right he, he, it. he was acting I, like a <laughs> See you next Tuesday. <laughs> um, yeah, it. There were a lot of pieces of this that were just not good. Um, I I hated the fact that two two ish years ago, Shayna Baszler was potentially the woman to beat. By the mm-hmm. way, she started a pandemic and started a pandemic. But now she's not even the most important member of a tag team featuring Natalia Neidhart. Um, it's it's depressing, honestly, and no Asians on this show whatsoever, especially not in this match. I'm very sad, and the match itself wasn't that good, but it wasn't like terrible. Like I said, warm bowl of water. This. Uh, this match got hurt because it followed the greatest celebrity match in WrestleMania history. I will agree with that. It was a cool down match because of it. So that's like both uh, women's matches in the two days in a row were cool down matches. Mm-hmm. So tag team wrestling enthusiast. I didn't hate the match. I, I get the premise of, again, I was so hyped from the fucking Knoxville match, but I was like, that was... And, uh, I watched wrestling all the time, and I was watching WrestleMania regardless. To me, one of the main drawing factors is being a jackass fan was fucking Johnny Oxville's wrestling at WrestleMania. Johnny Oxville does stupid shit all the time. This is going to be deadly. And it was fucking deadly. So after that whole super hyped up of everything, when the tag team women's match come up, I was just like, fuck, well, I'm just kind of, okay. Like, it, like my excitement was peaked, and that should have been... Hey, Blues Load. When your backstage segment was, because apparently, didn't notice this, no backstage segments both nights. Yep. Nope. It was all pre roll. Yeah. And it was like 45 minutes of vignettes, especially on this night where they just showed Bianca Beller's entrance the night before. Why are you doing that? Yeah, I didn't uh, understand that. 
That it, was stupid. It's you one did thing. Did not to need to show footage of the night before when. But, but there's your moment where they you did interview Bianca backstage. They just took that out. They wanted a segment to bring out Bianca Belair. No matter what way, shape, or form it was, that so was they there. put her over her entrance. Okay, I get it. I okay. I, no, no, I don't get that. it. I don't get it. They should be showing her the finish of the match. They shouldn't be showing any of it. They shouldn't be showing any of it, but of anything they should be showing should be her holding up the title and, oh my God, she's the new fucking w- women's champion. She had a really cool entrance, a WrestleMania style entrance. No one gives a fuck about her entrance. Chip, oh, what do yeah. you think of the match? <laughs> uh, yeah, boring. I didn't like it at all. Uh, I give it two stars. I did like Sasha coming in in the Lamborghini, but I didn't like the fact that it didn't have Lamborghini doors on it. What a nitpicky thing about a wrestling show, the car. <laughs> you know, so you're you, you know what that means. I was more interested in the interests than I was the actual match. <laughs> okay. I, 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 another thing that kind of made me, like, and I said this to Sleazy, we were watching, I go, so Naomi comes out, does her entrance, but Sasha just drives a Lamborghini on the stage, picks up Naomi where she was, and they just post it in <laughs> like there. four seconds, and then they go. And I'm like, what was the point of that? <laughs> like, what was the point of the car? What if they just come out together in the Lamborghini and not? I, I know Naomi needed to get her glow shit in, but it was. She's was a may yay 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 zing. She's a may yay. <laughs> Fat man, have we been thrown off the air yet? Not yet. Well, let's just pay the bills. Okay. Speaking of cooldown matches, like that Edge versus easy. AJ Styles. Holy shit. What was your problem with this match? 26 minutes? 24 minutes and 5 seconds. 26 minutes? Can gave this three and a half. Sorry, John. You are an overrating piece of shit. This match could have got 10 minutes cut from it. Picked up the pace a little bit. And why do we keep saying AJ Styles and WrestleMania and disappointment? This was a disappointing match. But was that AJ Styles' fault? He's Mr. Anti-WrestleMania. It was an okay match for a house show. It never picked up to second gear, honestly. It did not. And literally, I think Sleazy said it. Like, Sleazy started, it never picked up, and I said, the next gear. Like, yeah, like, it was good. It was psychologically sound. Way too long, and it never hit that next gear. Mm -hmm. And distraction finish trope was dumb. So, But it helps put over the stable. They could have done that on Raw. But the match wasn't on fucking Raw. I was like, why not? Why? Why not do it in like, front of the rest of the crowd? They, they, they could have done, some, done something with Priest on Raw and had to do it. So, well, in a way they did, but and also you sit there and show it on WrestleMania when everyone in the world is watching it. Everyone there is live, so they're going to tune into Raw the next night and Raw's afterwards. They're going to tune into Raw next night to see why Damian Priest was just standing there. Well, Edge looked like, oh, look, I've never seen Damien Priest before in my life. Well, I kind of like this. The, and the he was behind him, so how do you even know he was there? I ca- it reminds me of... So it reminds me... 100% turn in because Damien Priest is there. It reminds me of... So if Damien uh, Priest... If I didn't have a camera right now, if I'm doing a move and Damien Priest is standing behind me, how would I know? You don't, you don't know when people's eyes are on you? No, don't have that sense. I don't care. I, do. I don't care. You have you have. There's a forty foot fucking screen in front of him, right? Well, there's that like you know, not that he couldn't see the fucking head that was there on was the a screen. Everywhere, there's there's literally solid. screens everywhere. He was facing the entrance. There was no screen there. Oh yeah, you're the right. Whole there's wall no a screen. There, there's no. Oh yeah, that's right. There's a whole wall screen. No, I don't buy it because you're wrong. There was no screen where he was standing. Plus, the screen's above him. Batman, you're wrong. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. You're still wrong. You're still wrong. I'm right. You're still wrong. It doesn't matter. It's stupid. It was stupid. 
I don't know. I'm fully invested in this. That, that's like, how you know Fat Man is wrong. Because if something is stupid, it's usually when he's wrong. Exactly. He's got to cover it. it. It's Edge I, taking the Gangrel's role no, as the leader of the bridge. I understand and I love that. it. But I'm going up for a move, and then all of a sudden, I just want to look behind me and just notice that Damian Priest is there. That's dumb. They could have done it differently. They didn't have to. Thank because you. There's a fucking. No, they didn't have to, but because there's just, a screen looked, there, and it wasn't behind there was no him. Screen. He was on the side of him. He ended up being on the side of him. Priest didn't move. Priest just stood on the side of the ring as AJ climbed the turnbuckle. Yeah. Where he was versus where Priest was, absolutely, he could see him. Yeah. Even even if you if you take away the obviousness of there's screens everywhere. Which, which there was. Performer, you're not going to look at the screen, but okay, cool. He's still there. You could see him out of his corner of your eye. It was dumb. It was so stupid. I, I that's the, about, that's one of the few things I don't have a problem with is, is the finish. They could do way. They could have done it a thousand different ways. They just told, said, did one of the dumbest. They could have easily just had him just, I wouldn't say interfere in the match, but just standing there. I don't know. It just, it didn't seem like a good way to start that stable. I disagree. Um, Mainly because I think that Priest is enough of a powerhouse that to have, well, here, here's, there's two things wrong with that. Number one is that while Priest was there, Edge didn't need him to distract to win. So having Priest intentionally interfere in the match would make Edge look worse. Having him just stand there means that AJ is completely in the wrong without Edge doing anything. You know what I mean? It was a momentary lapse. Okay. You know what I mean? So in that case, it makes them both look stronger it may it doesn't make AJ look like a doob. You know, he he's yeah, he saw him out of the court of eyes, but it's just long enough that it distracted him long enough to lose. Because they're both two elite performers. I know why AJ lost, because he got cut by his pyro. He couldn't see out of that eye. He couldn't see the out of that eye. Pyro didn't want none. <laughs> <laughs> they they act like, like they're really scared, but they really don't want none. <laughs> even though it, even though it was the other eye, but I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use it like that. I don't it, know. It I was, was a worked injury. It was I was disappointed. It was the left side. Actually, was, was it the left side? No, it wasn't. It was the right side. No. That's why I said it was the wrong side for him to so I could make that up, but Oh no. No, I was I was extremely disappointed. This was the match I thought was steal the show and Same here. Same of course, here. WWE was like, We're not gonna give the fans what we want, what they want. No, we, we gave them something they didn't think they needed. And I said to Sleazy, I'm like, okay, this is a typical edge match since he's been back. So it's going to start really slow. It's going to pick up. And it, again, it never got into that mm-hmm. pick up. Well, thank God it wasn't the greatest WrestleMania match ever. <laughs> it wasn't. Okay. Talk, people. Kind of I don't know why you're so cynical over it. I enjoyed the hell out of it. I get where you're coming to that it seemed like it didn't pick up a second gear, but that was not not the that match didn't need that tone for that second gear for how dark it was to be set up and how they're going with Edge in the future and your hindsight stuff. I totally agree with that comment. Again, hindsight at the time. Yeah, but you, at the time is at the time I was still invested. Yeah. I'll agree with Chip, but at the time, I was still invested, too. I was invested in the match, and then it just ended. I'm like, well, that sucked. So I said, well, again, this was going to be a fucking great match, and it was not a great match. Expectations are too high. And maybe, again, we've said this before on the show, that maybe could that's be, yeah. me. Maybe that's me. Maybe I said the expectations too high, and it just, maybe it was better than I think it is, but it wasn't as good as I thought it would be. Be. Okay, Mark. Uh, three and a half. Sorry. Overrated piece of shit. Sleazy. 
Three. All ring piece of shit. Okay. What did the bad watch say? It said uh, John Shire's officially the head of coach at Duke. New Day versus Shemass and Ridge Holland. A.K.A. Newsies. It, <laughs> it went a whopping one minute and 40 seconds. Can't gave this one and a half stars. I didn't give it a rating. It it got bumped from night one. They had a it final got two. They got They put it on night two just to give them on the show. I applaud them for that. But then it was obviously way too short. You could tell they were running out of time, so they cut it. They didn't want to cut it again. So I, I don't know. But with this fucking show ending 50 minutes early, you could at least give them 10 minutes to fucking go out. I don't know. Yeah, but you couldn't because you didn't expect wrong. Like, right. Easy. Right. So. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm glad I got on the show, but I feel bad that they didn't do as much as I could have. Yeah, that yeah, was a cool down in between the next match, which was better than it should have been. Mm-hmm. And the next two matches. <laughs> oh, fuck you on that. I know Sleazy's going to get into that. Austin Theory versus Pat McAfee, 9 minutes, 40 seconds. Can I give us three and a quarter? Sleazy. Second best match. No, best match. Featuring a commentator ever in a WrestleMania. Totally agree. Dude, Literally. I think you're wrong because the next match is the best match to feature a commentator. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you are wrong because Vince versus Shane was better than this lawyer. Yeah, but he wasn't an active commentator at the time. Doesn't matter. You said you said commentator. I said active commentator. You did not say active. I absolutely did not say active. He did not say active commentator, but if he meant to say active commentator, I understand. But but we all knew he meant active commentator. Yeah, I, I know a fat man's being a dick, and it's the one time he's actually right. I am right. I'm always right. Um, I okay, could have so sworn I said active commentator. Over here. That, what'd Just you rate it, deep though? over here. What'd you rate it? It was three stars. It, it yeah. was. I, yeah. yeah, I agree. Three stars. It was fantastic stars, is what it was. I got three three quarters. I loved it. Fucking overrating piece of Marcus fucking shit. Hey, I do whatever the fuck I want. Remember? Yeah. No. Nope. Give it to him, Jim. Give it okay. to him. Fuck him One. up. Fuck him up. <laughs> Stop stealing my shit. Come on. That's South Park. That that's South Park. Dickhead. I was saying that shit when I was like fucking four, motherfucker. South Park was probably still up, dickhead. In 1989, don't think so, piece right. of fucking shit. Stop stealing my shit fuck. for one. Go fuck yourself in New York. Oh, I heard it here in Canada. You must have heard it in New York. <laughs> I am deaf in one ear though, so remember that. Right, Ain't stupid year, in the other. Turned over. <laughs> Stick it in uh, the other. There you go. Ear, infu- ear infection. But so yeah. Two of the best matches in WrestleMania history happened on this night, might I add. Uh, <laughs> what? Well, the best co- active commentator match ever happened. Oh. And the best saying. celebrity match ever that's happened. Like, so what you're saying is concluding night one and how we're talking about night two for like a scatter moment, this is a top five WrestleMania of all time. Uh, we'll get to the next match. So, McAfee wins, which was a, kind of a surprise a little bit, but not really. Because... Not at all. McAfee finally got his first win. At so WrestleMania, then, no less. So then Vince Tease is coming in the ring and then does come in the ring. So then we get the epic that is Pat McAfee versus Mr. McMahon and Sleazy commentator versus commentator. <laughs> Sleazy, take it away. What the fuck was this? Three minutes and 45 seconds of commentator versus commentator gold. If by gold, you mean huge buckets of shit, then Yes the fuck was this no seriously how do you do 
a fucking 75 plus, uh, what is he, six, 76, right? 76. 76 year old man who can't yeah. bump for anyone. You know, what the fuck are you guys doing? Uh, I think exactly what they did was perfect. Well, here's the thing. I watched, um, the, I watched the I watched the podcast of Pat McAfee, and there was nothing that led into this at all. So I this came out of nowhere with me. So who is this supposed to help? Like, if you watch the product, oh fuck you! McAfee kicked in McMahon's door, and that's how. Oh, I do yeah. remember that. I do remember. They that's showed it was- nine times during the two nights. Yeah, so that's that's why Vince was pissed because. Back if he kicked in his door to his office. Because Austin ran into it. Austin Theory ran into it. Like a bitch. Like a little bitch. And also Austin Theory is Vince McMahon's little bitch. Sure. Yeah. So he's Drew McIntyre 2.0. Sleazy fucking come back. No, no, I call him like Shrew McIntyre because he's not as big. Okay. uh, Okay. We'll we'll go there. But also Sleazy said something. Yeah. Who is this supposed to benefit? Yep. Who does this make look good? Austin looks like shit. Pat sure. now looks like shit sure. because he lost to a 76 year old fucking man. To a punt. To no, a punt. No. To a fucking punt. It wasn't even a it wasn't even Vince kicking him. He kicked a ball into his not even his groin. Vince. It was in his belly. Was and that was enough to say, ah, you're down for three. Go well, fuck I mean, yourself. It- you can get your win knocked out easily with the football to, to the fucking rich. I don't give a shit. The, the, oh, okay, so, who, yeah, yeah, Chip, heaven forbid you use real facts here to defend this. How, how many times? <laughs> I'm not, no. If I took that, I would not be staying down for three. From a 76 year old man who hits the gym three times a fucking don't day. Don't care. Don't care. So, you can hit the gym three times a day, doesn't mean you're strong. Even if uh, he's toned, no. which is nice, but Ooh, thank you. I go to the so, gym. So we put it as I'm not strong. McAfee had just had a match. Austin Theory also beat him up. I'm too. I I I'm a little bit less pissed now because my beautiful, wonderful wife gave me Cadbury? Reese's peanut butter cups. But oh. anyway, okay, so, anyways. Match was great. It's fine. Uh, the the people that benefited from this were the fans in the moment, because it's not like you had Vince McMahon beat an actual active talent. McAfee beating an actual talent is fine, because McAfee still has that former athlete keeps in good shape. Blah 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 blah. blah. But for was Vince, on NXT. Yeah, but for Vince to beat an actual. Talent, a member of the roster, more people see it on that than Pat McAfee beating them, which is why they did it this way. Like the, I like the last there. Once you bring Austin out again, the and only again, I mean, there's that too. and again, I will give WWE credit by having McMahon be in a match because you never saw it coming, even though there was rumors. Okay, but. You could have done this again a thousand different ways, and he chose to have the co- chairman of the company potentially get. I know he didn't take a bump. Well, he took a bump, kind of, when Austin came out. But if you want for, to call that a bump, not for Pat, not for Pat. So he didn't take a bump for Pat, but the potential was there for him to get seriously hurt. Yeah, it was dumb. But and here's it the worst part about stupid, it. it. It sucked. It, I'm, I'm wrong. No, here, here's the worst part about it. You take out the tiny bit between the actual start of the match with um, Vince and Pat to the very end of it and just have Austin get his heat back. And Vince beat the shit out and of him. Be- yeah. No match. No match. Then it works. Because then Austin comes out to save the day, so to speak. There was no... Vince needed his win back. Ryan, (laughs) with with all due respect, (laughs) I I hope you step on Lego. I I hope you step on Vince McMahon so I first win at WrestleMania Lego. 
76 years old. First win at WrestleMania. What a fucking achievement. That is, at best, a bronze trophy on Xbox. That's cool. Oldest man to win a match at WrestleMania. He owns the company. (laughs) Oh, look. He's WWE champion again. He beat Roman. Why not? Can can you imagine? (laughs) Finger poker down. Finger poke 2.0. It is the ultimate of uh, uh, wrestling promoter is also holding the title. Books himself as champion. Well, anyway, once Austin came out, it was entertaining. More beer. More beer. The total, what was it, 47? 46. 46 beers in over two nights. Holy crap. I did that all in one day. I want to point out. You're an alcoholic, though. Oh, oh, wow. Jesus Christ. You're in the same boat. Holy shit. So you are Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, he's bald, so yeah. yeah. I do look like him. I do look like him. You're right. Um, How the fuck did you just insult him and get away with it? Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> because are... people, call me, people who call me an alcoholic all my life, I'm used to hearing it. It's cool. Wow. Jesus. He came out, he he came out, out of the room with a bottle, over. bro. This fucking, I... this segment got dark, okay? I have been on a bender with him. <laughs> okay, fair. It's not a bender. It's called a weekend. Get it right. Wow. Right? <laughs> we don't know how to celebrate a Tuesday or nothing. <laughs> now we were we were talking about that because Josh and Del were over. <laughs> we were talking about Dallas, and I was talking, we were talking about you getting fucked up with me, and then Josh trying to hang with me at the German bar wasn't smart. Good times. I, I felt like Ric Flair that weekend. I spent more fucking money on spilt liquor. Than fucking, <laughs> fucking anything. All right, I, I want I want to point something out here. Um, now I know I'm not I'm a fucking mark when it comes to finances. You're not hip to what's cool. What's that? I said you're not hip to what's cool. I'm probably not hip to what's cool. <laughs> okay, to be fair. Um, but one of the things that I'm a mark for is finances and you know promotional stuff. Over the course of two nights, we saw Stone Cold Steve Austin's Broken Skull IPA all over ah, the place. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, It wasn't the IPA. It was the American Lager that just came out last week. It was his new beer. Forgive me. Fuck you. Man, I don't know, man, you like this stuff? We were just trying to help keep you properly fucking informed, dickhead. The point is, how much <laughs> is it? Per beer, uh, it was twenty dollars for four packs. So about five something. Five dollars a beer times forty six beers. Again, he owns it, so no, he shills it. He does not own it. They license. He licenses it. He's still making money off. He's it, he's it. making a bunch of money off of it for the brand deal that's effectively happening there, but. That's two hundred and fifty dollars a beer that just went. Pfft. And I can't and handle Del found, that. Dell found it in Maryland and brought it up to WrestleMania. We were drinking it for WrestleMania. It was great. Um, one of the the stores up here, Beers of the World, holds it, uh, sells it. But I don't know. Pennsylvania how much it is. said they won't do it because they said it's too expensive to get in it, and the IPA wasn't that popular. So they're like, we're not fucking doing it because it's a fucking IPA, and the IPAs are terrible. But the American Lager is not. Considering I have four different beers in my fridge right now and none of them will ever be touched by me i have i have four different beers in one shelf over there so Devin yeah but you're Collins drinking them Collins, this is an english heart <laughs> deadly, <laughs> deadly commentator match and another fucking amazing wrestlemania moment what the worst yeah. stunner ever doesn't matter. Even Everybody eclipsing Linda it. fucking yeah, McMahon. Linda McMahon isn't the worst the stunner thing. ever. I've taken shitty stunners and they weren't even close to that. Here's the thing though. What made that a moment when he stunned him and Vince took it like shit was Austin laughing, laughing. his ass off. Yeah. It looked like he knew that Vince took it like shit. 
He was having fun with it, which means the crowd knew he was having fun, so they were having more fun. Right. Yeah. Plus, oh, absolutely. This is going to hurt the next day. But holy <laughs> fucking shit. How many quads did he blow off that? 17. At least 17. He's fully winner, Kevin winner, Nashed it. Okay. Winner take all for the WWE and Universal Championship. Brock White Lesnar, WWE Champion versus Woman Mains, Universal Champion. Uh, 12 minutes, 20 seconds. Um, can gave us three and a half. They were going. They were going really good. And then they got fucked with what looks like that injury to Reigns. And I'm very sad because I felt like that match could have been the best one they've had. And then they got sidelined with the injury shit, which made it the worst match they've ever had. But still... Decent enough that what was going was good until all that shit happened, and then it just ended really abruptly. Yeah, I thought it, it just ended. I didn't realize he was hurt until after the fact because I thought, oh, he's just selling the Kamara. Oh, no, you saw that arm snap, but or you saw you saw a give, but yeah, like, um, so they went home quickly. Sleazy made a count. It took six spears to beat Lesnar. Um, and that was pretty much six years and like 10,000 Superman punches. Um, <laughs> Stop Jackie Arlo. Stop Jackie Arlo. Arlo. That's what I was doing when Sasha was on the screen. He was um, he was getting all fucking Roman Reigns on that shit. Dad. <laughs> it was, it was, okay, match for house show. Wow. Like it could you have been over better. rating piece of shit. And here we go. I fully agree. I didn't think it was that entertaining. It could have been better. It should have been better. It absolutely Agreed. should have been better. But that ma- but like I said, that match that was a thirty minute match that we only got twelve minutes of because of an incident and it sucks. I okay. Here we go with conspiracy theory number four. Okay. I don't think he was hurt. I think that match went exactly as planned. Really? Yes. The city has a t- partial torn labor. I think they're full of shit. Right. I really, I, I one hundred percent believe they're full of shit because, and and here's why I think this. What a better way to get the title off of Reigns than to claim he's injured. But still fighting. Reigns ain't losing that fucking title to WrestleMania next year, or at least one of the two titles. I think he's going to lose one of the two titles. I think they're splitting him back up, and that's why. I I, and and Money in the Bank is doing that. That might be the case. Um, but I think what's going to happen is that he's going to put one title up, lose it, and then fend off whoever the other one is. We're 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 thinking about this too too easily. What if Ryan's right and he does lose in next year's WrestleMania, and he does lose one of the titles in Money in the Bank? But can he know belts? Well done, <laughs> Fuck well you. Done. Well done, <laughs> but Owens was winning the bank takes one of the titles off him. Okay. If you want to have Cody Rhodes have a proper build, build him for the year, him win the Rumble and face Reigns at WrestleMania. And oh, Reigns is fighting Rock at WrestleMania. Don't give me so foolish. Yeah. Reigns is supposed to fight Rock at this year's WrestleMania. Reigns was supposed to fight Rock at... WrestleMania the year before. Reigns supposed to fight Rock WrestleMania the year before. And It'll the be Holly, Hollywood, the year before. And the Hollywood, WrestleMania the year before. Hollywood is the, is the place to do that, though. And that's been said multiple times when they've talked about this match, that ever since they announced it was going to Hollywood, they were going to have it. And the reason a couple of years ago they talked about having this match and they didn't have it, didn't they fuck up the schedule because of how COVID fucked everything and Hollywood... WrestleMania Hollywood was supposed to be like a year or two ago. Yes. It was, it was supposed to be this year. Yeah. So th- this is what the kind of kicker with that is WrestleMania Hollywood's been moved once or twice. 
they were supposed to fight at so, that one. They're still so, rumored to fight at that one. So you're having Reigns drop the title to Rock? Yeah. No. I'm just saying he's holding the belt to WrestleMania next year. I never said he's dropping it to Rock. He's fighting Rock next year. But he's he doesn't need the belt the to do that. Title. He doesn't need the belt for that. Either no, they're going to put the belt on the Rock, or they don't need the title. Oh, they're not. And you've done it with Brock Lesnar, who's a part-time wrestler. Why not do it with the Rock? They did it with they fucking with the Goldberg. A wrestler. They did it with Goldberg recently, relatively yeah. speaking. I, I can succeed to that, that he could drop it at Mania next year, but I feel like he's still going to Mania as a champion and he's fighting Rock. I would say it would be a it would be a cop out to do it this way, but it would work. Is that Rock costs him the title but sometime? Why? But why? why? Because he's the tribal chief and Rock's the big... Yeah, because Rock's the head of that because, table. Yeah, the, Rock's the real head of the table. He's the one making the, the buco bucks. Roman might be the big fish in the small pond here, but I'm making $10 million by going, er, and then, ha ah, you know? Yeah. It, it's, the, it's the El Presidente versus the uh, prospect. I would... Okay, that's that's one way of putting it. I I would say basically your indie fed champion versus an actual WWE champion. I mean there's that too. I was going outside the box and not using wrestling on so, the motorcycle club. Sleazy. I mean it works. I mean I'm not saying it doesn't. Serious thing, Sleazy. I yeah. just got a text from Cummings. Michael tested positive for COVID. Oh shit. Great. Son of a bitch. Yep. Awesome. So, well. So, y'all ever had home, y'all ever had home tests? Yep. Yeah, he said he didn't have symptoms till yesterday. Breaking news. Everybody has COVID. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Fucking so, asshole. I knew that was coming. Just, just anyway. I, I had to tell you, obviously. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Again, I stay top five WrestleMania all time. It was a great, it was a great WrestleMania. Yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it more than I have others recently. I think Night Two knocks it down. No, Night Two gives you two of the best fucking moments ever in WrestleMania history. Before you bat an eyelash when you think about Night Two, it's two of the greatest moments in WrestleMania history. Before well, you. Night- well, Night but, one was great, and night two was entertaining. That's a good way of putting it. Okay. I, I actually like that a lot. Yep. Yeah, they had a WrestleMania and a sports entertainment mania. Right. Yeah, well, I was I was joking throughout the the entire night too, saying, "Oh uh, yeah, we didn't talk about Triple H. Welcome everyone to WrestleMania on night two, when WrestleMania started the night before." So, hey, that was kind of funny. <laughs> That's why he's like, oh, last night was the pre-show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn it! 77,000. Uh, Chip, put yourself over. Uh, We're going to take this week off, but we're going to get back to it next week. So next week, look for a new uh, it episode. It will be this of... week, you dumb fuck. Oh, you're right. This week, look out for the newest... Uh, Episode of the Best Art Sports Show Period 2 on Spotify with me and the Fat Man and Nabby G. Also, you can find me on Twitter at the Sports Guru 728. This is fucking hilarious. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. Nobody knows Kayfabe anymore. Ryan. Don't come find me on Reddit. I don't need to hear your stupid fucking Mac ideas. Well done. Enough of them on this show. <laughs> There's enough of them on this show. You're <laughs> absolutely right. Show. I'm at TWS Sleazy. TWS Fat Man. And the wrestling show's Twitter and Instagram is at Sleazy Fat Man. You can also find us on, once again, on r slash the wrestling show. And you can find us on TikTok at the wrestling show. You can find us, our show, at Gear Network 
gearradionetwork.com along with everybody else at the Gear Radio Network. And of course, you can get this wonderful podcast that you're listening to every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. wherever you get your favorite wonderful podcast like Spotify. Um, with thanks to Chip and Ryan. And as always, for Sleazy. For the fat man. This is the wrestling show. Thank you guys so much for listening. Peace. Fuck Dave Meltzer. A hot dog's on a sandwich. Chips a mark. Ryan's Canadian. And I'm not going to post the video. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.